everything. Dr. Oz has your worry warts guide. Every cough is not a cold. Every headache is not a hemorrhage. Do I take a Tylenol or do I go get a brain scan? Find out when to worry and when not to. Plus, Nick Cannon's health battle. It's tough for the doctors to diagnose what was really going on. And the breakup everyone's talking about. How do you cope with that? Ooh. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. All right, attention all worry warts. Today is your day. If you worry about every ache, pain, scrape, or cough, well, this show is for you. Because I have the definitive worry warts guide to alleviate your biggest health worries. So you know when you can relax. To start, I put a poll on DrOz.com to find out what you worry about most. So let's go to the worry wall. And let's look at what happened to 42% of you because you worry about catching the flu, like Maritza, who sent us this video. Hey, Dr. Oz, it's flu season again, and my anxiety levels are through the roof. Every time someone sneezes around me, all I see is this big green smog. I've now become a cyber chondriac. I research all the time for symptoms that probably are not even there. Am I paranoid or am I just a little cuckoo? <laughs> so, Mr. joining us. So, why do you worry so much about the flu? I worry about everything. I worry that I'm gonna get it. Everyone has the flu these days and I, I take the train to work. So people sneeze, things fly around <laughs> and I'm totally scared. Uh, so I, I constantly call my doctors. They're sick of me. I, I think I have everything. <laughs> now, really you do. call yourself a cyberchondriac. Yes. How much time do you actually spend online looking up these different illnesses? All day long, every single day. I research everything. Yeah. All right, so I want to help alleviate your worries. That's okay. our purpose today. I'm going to make sure you know when you're safe okay. and when you're not. Okay. That way you'll feel a bit more comfortable about everything in life. Okay, so here's when not to worry. Okay. I'm going to give you an acronym up here. You don't worry, and I want you to think of the word cold case. Cold case, because case stands for the four things that are good to have, okay. which don't mean you have a flu. So they are congestion, an acute cough, a sore throat, and an earache. Now, a lot of folks are gonna be surprised, but these symptoms alone are likely not to be the flu. Mm -hmm. So next thing you get a sore throat, don't panic, I got the flu, All right? That's commonly not the first thing that the flu would tell you. In okay. fact, what does usually signify a flu would can be remembered by using the word flu facts. Okay. But think of the word facts, put them up there. The F stands for fever, over 100 degrees. It aches, of course, all those muscle aches. Also, the tiredness, they're more commonly with the flu. Again, not with the climbing cold. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the flu facts, that list of symptoms on the left side over there, then you can, you know, go if you want to, go visit your doctor. That makes a little bit more sense. And then you can, if you think there are medications that can accelerate your recovery and alleviate your symptoms faster. Right. But I find myself self-diagnosing myself all the time. Well, again, I weigh that, I that to help make sure you don't self-diagnose yourself I for the that. flu. Mm -hmm. That's to get the flu shot, mm -hmm. right? Because have you had your flu shot? Yes, I did. Good for you. I did it, and it hurt. <laughs> it really did. Little trick when it's a flu shot: if they squeeze your arm a little before they give you the flu shot, they distract you. Then when the needle goes, in, you don't even feel it. Didn't <laughs> I work. Felt it. All right, get over here. Let me show you how the flu protects you. The flu shot. Obviously, if you take it in the right time, can uh -huh. make sure you don't get the flu. It doesn't work all the time, but pretty effectively. Let's go what back to what happens when you have the flu. Okay. Someone sneezes. Okay. Choo! Oh, 90 miles an hour, those particles fly mm -hmm. towards your face. When they finally get to your face, you inhale. Thousands right. of droplets go through your vocal cords, down into the lungs. Right. And they link up in these very small little hairs where the virus particle, that blue thing, sets up shop, penetrates through the surface, and goes into your lungs, causing all the symptoms we talked about with the cold case right. scenario. With the flu shot, doesn't usually hurt. Look. Yes, but doesn't it's usually not. hurt. That's right. <laughs> it's so it, really long. It, what it creates these antibodies uh -huh. to be made, these green things, they latch onto that blue virus and they right. prevent the virus from going into your body. So the virus okay. is still there, but it can't infect you. It reduces the risk of getting the flu by about 60%. Not 100%, but by 60%. Right. So it's one way to feel a bit more comfortable that you really don't have it. Right. I've enjoyed having you on. Be Thank comfortable. You I hope too. that helps. Thank you. All right, let's go back to the worry wall. The next thing that you worry about are headaches. In fact, 58% of you worried they might be something more serious, like Janine. Dr. Oz, I get the worst headaches. They're awful. Sometimes I actually feel like my head's going to explode. I go online and I Google the symptoms, and every time I do, the first thing that comes up is brain tumor. Sometimes I swear that I'm actually having an aneurysm, I don't know if I should be taking aspirin or if it's something worse. How do I stop worrying? 
Janine is joining us, and is it just a headache, or do you worry about a lot of things in life? I worry about everything. I'm a mom, I've got three boys, they're very active. I worry about every single thing that happens to them. But when it comes to my headaches, I worry the most because they need me. So if something happens to mom, we're in a lot of trouble. So I never know if it's a small thing or a big thing. So let me take that one little issue of the headaches off your plate. There are okay. other things, of course, we can focus on, but headaches are, and health problems are a big one. All right, so when you search on the web and you see under headaches things like tumors and aneurysms, how, do you, how does it make you feel? It freaks me out. I never know, you know how bad the pressure has to be. Do I take a Tylenol or do I go get a brain scan? <laughs> <laughs> Two big yes. extremes here, exactly. right? All right, so. Knowledge is power. Yes. That's why we do this show. So if I give you a little bit of knowledge about headaches, okay. it might at least give you a bit more comfort that you can take the Tylenol and not have to rush off to the yes. headache. Okay, exactly. so the, there's two ways, two ways to help figure out uh, whether these symptoms are something bad or something good, and I think okay. this will alleviate your worries. Great. The first one has to do with when you get to discomfort. So come on over here, I bet you a little chart. Stand right here. This is representative of your headaches. Yes. Slide that across to what time of the day you usually get your headache. Let's when say. is it usually? It's normal. Everyone should be taking this in your own mind when you get headaches. It's so. probably between midday and afternoon. Okay. And what are you normally doing when you get the headaches in the middle of the day? So getting the boys ready for school and I'm up in the morning and I'm racing around and breakfast and lunch and uniforms and going over vocab words and then we get out the door. And then I run back in the house and start my day and cleaning up and everything. And then all of a sudden it just settles in. So I think it's that morning rush and the racing around and then when everything's done. So I'm going to plead to you. Okay. It's important, all right? If your headaches in the middle of the day, they're almost certainly going to be okay. okay. I don't worry about that. They're stress headaches usually. Okay. They're usually related to tension. The things you're describing happen there. Okay. If you've got throbbing sensations, if you've got one-sided symptoms more than the other, fits more with migraines. But all this stuff happens usually around here. Okay. It's not pleasant, right. but there's no reason to worry. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you, this show is about not just telling you what to know, but you know, telling you things that you have to know. Right. So I'm going to tell you when you should know. Okay, great that a headache is a concern. If the headache happens late at night and wakes you up. Okay. That's a symptom that worries me because sometimes brain tumors have been known to do this. Oh boy. So it doesn't mean you have a brain tumor, just go check it out. That way you actually feel more comfortable, but don't waste your time here. Okay, okay? great. That's the first way. The right. second thing we're gonna talk about is what happens when you actually get the headache. So come back with me. Okay. I've got a little model here for you. How suddenly it comes on is a big clue to us. So this is a little brain model, stand right here next to me. All right. You and I can play a little game here. Okay. It's a test. I want you to hit this brain, and I want you to watch what happens over here in our worry words guide. What happens to the pain? Does it go up slowly or fast? Go ahead and bang it. Okay, your headache in this example goes up slowly, finally peaking, and then it reaches where you want to be. Right. That's a good thing. Okay. Is that typical for you or yeah. atypical? Yeah, no, that's exactly normally how it happens. All right, so I'm gonna hit the brain now, and I'll show you a different scenario. When I hit the brain, it happens quick. Okay. Pains that come on very suddenly without a lot of warning, uh, those, you know, are the bad ones. those are the bad ones. Okay. Those are the ones that sometimes can be bleeds from aneurysms. Yeah. Those are the things that worry me more. If you have this, you want to see somebody. Right. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with being inquisitive when it comes to your health, but don't jump to the wrong conclusions okay. when you have a little bit of knowledge that can make you feel more comfortable. Right. The reason that a lot of doctors go into medicine is because they know more about their bodies so they can be more comfortable about day-to-day -day issues. Okay. They tend to be the calmest right. because we know what to worry about. And then you can act accordingly. Great. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, let's go back to the worry wall for the next worry. Guess what? It happened to 65% of you, and you're worried about stomach pain, that it might be something more serious, including Melissa. Dr. Oz, whenever my stomach hurts, I worry. Could it be an ulcer? Do I need my organs removed? It feels like a sharp pain. Should I be worried about my constant stomach aches? So Melissa's here. Organs removed? Why do you have to have your organs removed? Dr. Oz, I worry so much about my stomach pain. Um, my family thinks I'm crazy because I'm constantly worrying about this. But because there's so much going on in your stomach, I wonder, could it be my gallbladder or my or an ulcer or my appendix? Oh, oh I, I got it. So <laughs> problems for you to move. All right. So let's go through when to worry and when not to worry. So don't worry if your stomach pain gets better with antacids or the pink stuff, mm -hmm. right? If it feels better after a poop, likewise, those are all good things. Those, that signifies irritable bowel or food sensitivity or just indigestion, as you mentioned earlier. Right. However, if the pain comes back immediately after taking antacids, or if you've got nausea with a deep burrowing burning, like someone's drilling a hole in your belly, right. uh, especially with the nausea that I mentioned, or if you've got black stools, okay. tarry stools, because that means there was blood in, in your poop. 
Right. And that can be from a bleeding ulcer and things like that. Those are times when instead of just reassuring you on the phone, the doctor, I'd say, you gotta come in so I can talk to you. So now that everyone knows that, you ask accordingly. Now you know what to worry about and what not to worry about. Does that help you with your understanding at all? Yeah, it definitely does. Just can I say this up to everybody? The truth is your body's gonna tell you when something is wrong. All I want you all to do is listen to your bodies instead of your fears. Now we all have a cyberchondriac in our life. Does anyone have a cyberchondriac they know of? I'm holding one's hand right here. Good, all right. So <laughs> the best advice that I have is to keep calm and don't be a worry wart. So I posted this little exact sign on Facebook and Instagram, share it and tag at least one person who could use some reassuring. And I hope it calms them down. I'll be right back. <laughs> During flu season, how do you boost your immunity? First, I always get a flu shot as soon as possible. Then I make sure to always wash my hands and consume a lot of vitamin C. I've been flu-free for eight years. Share your story on Dr. Oz's Facebook page. Coming up next, America's Got Talent star Nick Cannon discusses his life-threatening illness. It was tough for the doctors to diagnose what was really going on. And the breakup everyone's talking about. How do you cope with that? Coming up next natural remedies even doctors trust from lowering blood pressure to conquering chronic pain see how holistic ways can heal your body all new dr oz that's coming up tomorrow You never know what watching him host America's Got Talent, but Nick Cannon is facing a very real battle with an autoimmune disease that affects more than five million people. Today, he's coming forward, telling us how he's taking control of his health in the face of a serious diagnosis and personal stress. Take a look. From TV host, actor, and producer to network executive at Nickelodeon, Nick Cannon is no stranger to the spotlight. Even as his highly publicized split from Mariah Carey remains in the headlines, the multi-talented entertainer and father of twins is focused on his health after a very unexpected diagnosis. I wake up in the hospital with a bunch of doctors telling me I have kidney failure. Nick would later be diagnosed with lupus, which was affecting his kidneys. In his web series, Incredible Health Hustle, he documents his journey, which began two years ago while on vacation. I was with my family in the snow, playing, having a good time. All of a sudden, I start swelling up, having shortness of breath, excruciating pain in my right side. After being treated and released, just one month later, Nick was once again in pain and back in the hospital with a much more serious condition. They found two blood clots in my lungs. With his health on the line, Nick got serious. He cut back on his work schedule, followed a strict diet, and pushed himself to make his health a priority. I'm eating the right things, I'm doing all the proper exercises, and I feel just energized like I've never felt before. Nick Cannon is a fighter, and he is here. Please come on out, Nick. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you, you so much for making the trip. Thank you. Thank you. You dressed very nicely today. Well, so are you. <laughs> You're uh, let's talk a little bit about lupus. Sure. When, when you were first diagnosed with having kidneys that were fit, falling apart on you. Right, right. You said you were scared. How are you feeling now? Oh, I'm feeling great now. I mean, uh, keeping my health in tip top shape. The doctor yeah. says I got a clean bill of health. It, it is hard to diagnose lupus sometimes. What happened in your case? How did Extremely. they figure it out? Extremely. Uh, at first, you know, it started, first they thought, you know, because I was, you know, in the mountains, they thought, oh, he's dehydrated. It could be, you know, the whole thing of the, you know, elevation. And then it said, no, maybe it's just a kidney infection. And then from there, they realized it was lupus nephritis. And from, you know, then once they knew what it was, it's like, okay, we know what to do to fix it. So lupus is an autoimmune disease. Yes. We all know that. Uh, and it does tend to affect kidneys. Have you ever seen kidneys? Uh, I, not up close and personal, but uh, you, you got a few it. over there hanging out? I do. <laughs> this, this is a Dr. Oz show. I mean, here, here are your purple gloves. <laughs> All right. I, I actually thought they'd match your outfit. Uh, they did, perfectly. Yes, Thank you for that. It's very kind of you. The did. lupus colors, too. <laughs> that's, yes, they are. 
So uh, kidneys are magical. I mean, they're supposed to filter all the fluid out. And they look like this normally. Ooh. So this is the big tube. I might need some of those in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I, hope, I hope not. But that's you know, obviously some, what, sometimes what happens in lupus is all the blood that goes to the kidney so they can filter sometimes does this to your kidneys. Yeah. So this is the kidney. I'll hold them right here. This is a kidney of, of somebody who's had kidney failure. Right. You can go ahead and hold that. And just com you can feel a normal kidney. And just describe that to everybody. Oh, it feels like... Wet potatoes. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. A mushy potato. Yeah. They've never been described that way before, but pretty accurate. And this was more like beef jerky. Yeah. <laughs> you, you take your gloves off. So let's talk about how you're going to recover from all this. These are, yes. these are a couple of different problems. They, they sometimes begin to, to snowball on you. What's been the hardest part of, of changing your life? I know you're a big fast, fast food fan. I was a big fast food oh, fan. Oh, past tense. Yeah, yeah, because you know, this condition happened in, in 2012 and I had to go on a strict renal diet, you know, because of my kidneys. And you know, I've, I've been dealing with it. I haven't had fast food since 2012, so I'm, I'm doing pretty Have you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. there we go. <laughs> so besides food, what else are you doing? Uh, food, lots of, obviously lots of water, lots of exercise. And you're doing all the preventive things. You get your flu shot. You're actually a paid spokesperson for Theraflu. Yes, yes. It's, it's really cool. I partnered with Theraflu because they're doing good things. Not only are they getting everybody flu ready with all the information and, the, you know, encouraging people for the vaccination, uh, but the idea is that they're helping the community by giving back to uh, Families Fighting Flu, a nonprofit organization. They're raising over $100,000 for them. So I just try to get out there and just make sure Thanks everybody's doing it. So let me talk about stress for a second. Sure. Stress is a big part of coping with lupus. It's a big part of coping with life. Yeah. You've gone through a pretty public breakup with Mariah Carey. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what that is? To me, it's like no one likes to talk about their personal life in public, you know, especially when you're dealing with something like this. But what you got to understand is like, I understand that this is what we signed up for. So I try to, you know, remain as classy and, and as respectable and, you know, the, trying to be the best human being I could possibly be through this entire process. And, you know, sometimes if the media wants to harbor on those type of things, you don't let it stress you out because, you know, people are going to talk. And I, I was talking a long time ago, what other people think about me is none of my business. You're absolutely right. <laughs> so I'm, 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 stay I'm, focused. You've always been a classy guy, and I, I'm, I'm not actually worried about what the media says about you. I'm not actually talking about you personally. Going through any kind of separation from someone you love right. is, is stressful. How do you cope with that? You know, the beautiful thing is that it's still, we're still family, man. At the end of the day, we have two beautiful children, and we do what's best for our kids, and that's, that's what life is all about. You had some physical pain through this, unfortunately, because you've got this big tattoo. <laughs> Can I just show us, everybody? I didn't realize how big this thing was, but and now we took a picture of it. See that bigger shit? tattoo. So here's how you're covering it up. Now, what is this like? Where'd you get these pictures from? <laughs> it's not finished yet. You know what? That's, it's not done. It looks different than that now. It's actually, you know, even other than the whole personal stuff, I just kind of fell in love with tattooing, and like now I'm, I have a whole sleeve in my back. So when it's ready, it will be revealed, and you will see it's a whole, it's a, a work of art, Dr. Will you Oz. come back so I see it? Yes, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll hook it up for you. Before you go, um, I want to ask something that's been a sensitive topic. Uh, Amanda Bynes is your, your, your co-star. Uh, yeah, she's been uh, criticized in the wrong word. People have been making fun of her yeah. because of her mental illness. Yeah. What, what do you have to say to those folks? Oh, man. I mean, this is such a beautiful young lady inside and out. I mean, I've known her since she was nine years old. And I consider her someone like closest family. So when you see someone going through something, a mental condition or any kind of condition, I mean, you know, because someone's acting a certain way because they don't have control over uh, their mental capacity at the time, it, it really saddens me. So I had, you know, I usually don't want to speak out on others' business a lot, but I had to step up and say, hey, take note, you know, if this was someone in your family, if this was someone in a mental institution, you wouldn't poke fun and, and crack jokes or put cameras all in their face. But because she's a public figure, we choose to do that. It, it really saddened me. So I wanted to step up and be, you know, that rock and that foundation for her. And whenever she needed it, I was like, hey, call me. I'm here, whatever you need. The good reminder always, pick it on someone about I know this is never funny. I don't care what the excuse is. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting uh, to know you. Such take a care, pleasure. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up, bakery buddies in business and addicted to sugar. How a three-day sugar detox was no cakewalk. What they did to change their lives. And now, it could change yours. What you can do to crush that sugar addiction. Next. Not to 
too long ago, we met best friends Katara and Shoniji. They share both a business and an addiction. They are bakery owners with an addiction to sugar. Now imagine how hard that must be. Not only did they find out their truth in our truth tube, but they started on a plan to end their addiction for good. Take a look. Remember best friends Katara and Shoniji? They are bakery owners who are addicted to sugar. We eat cookies and cupcakes and cakes and pies. Morning, noon, and night. That was good. So he called in best-selling author and a leader in nutrition, Dr. Joel Furman, to help. You really have to give up anything that's, with a, that's very, very sweet. And we're talking here about not just sugar, but a guave, a guave nectar, honey, maple syrup, anything very sweet right now. Oh, so this is the yeah. table we can't have? That's right. This is the table you're not going to have. So how are Katara and Shoniji doing today? So difficult to be back home and give up sugar. I did struggle a little bit. I had to make sure that it tasted just right for the customer. So that's why I cheated. <laughs> it's carrot cake, so it has, you know, vegetables. Oh my God, I haven't had this. It's so good. After stopping the sugar, we get this amazing phone call. We were going to Italy, the Dr. Furman's detox getaway. Hey, how are you? How are you guys? We were able to go and learn all these different ways to knock out the sugar habit. I'm trying to get people to get rid of their sweet taste buds. Really? Good. good. Wow. It's not as sweet. One of the things that Dr. Furman told us was, your taste buds will change. And we were like, yeah. Lies. Mm -mm. No. Lies. But they have. <laughs> they have changed. They have. The Italy trip for me was a wake up call. Okay, we're gonna learn how to break our sugar addiction. But at the end of the day, I actually learned that I can prevent myself and my family from going through all these diseases that take away our loved ones. This change, it pretty much has happened immediately. And I've been able to feel the difference in my body. I'm not getting headaches anymore. I don't feel as tired. And of course, the weight loss. I'm 15 pounds down. I actually dropped 11 pounds. I think it's only, she dropped 15 because I started a week after her. But, uh... Catch up. <laughs> I gotta catch up. Let we have done you. excellent with the tasting. It's a sad day. I'm not gonna do it though. I'm gonna stay away. Honestly though, we were using that tasting as a crutch. We didn't need to do all that tasting. It, we it, knew what it, that it, stuff we was. To. <laughs> here they are, Katara and Sanigi are here. You guys have must have been so surprised when Dr. Furman called you about that Italy trip. Oh my God, it was amazing. Life changing. Yes. What'd you learn? Well, for myself, what I learned most was the backstory behind why we don't need to eat mm -hmm. so many of these things that we were eating. Yeah. Um, so just learning exactly what the sugar and you know some what of the does. other things were doing to our bodies. Sometimes you get on a lifestyle change or a diet and it's, oh, you just need to get on it so you can lose weight. But Dr. Furman actually taught us that we can prevent diseases. We can prevent all cancer, uh, breast cancer, headaches. heart disease, headaches, all yeah. those things. You don't have to go through those things if you just eat right. And you know, you feel better that day. Yes. Those oh, are all yeah. side benefits at the end. You feel so good, it's not that hard. Right. So the last time you were here, we put you on this three day sugar detox. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the first step to sort of get you over the hump. So Shanice, what was that like to be in that program? Well, for me, I literally, the day after we left here, I was all in and it was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard because I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, like I said, it's one of those things where like in Italy, we learned all the backstory, but making a decision to just say, okay, I'm not gonna eat sugar anymore without really knowing yeah. and really knowing what to do to substitute when I was getting those cravings and you know, it was, it was a little crazy. Yeah. So let's go back to the truth tube. After the three day hard part, we actually put you on a program. And I'm gonna reveal to you and everybody else what we found in terms of the amount of sugar you're shaking in your body. So when you came here the first time, uh, Katara, we'll start with you. Okay. You acknowledged, this is your food diary, that you're having 136 grams of sugar a day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of sugar, folks. Now you're eating 61 grams okay. of sugar. <laughs> I mean, it's a big difference, less than half. Shriniji, She's high-fiving because she was in the same camp. 135, you guys are you know, peas in a pod. 135 <laughs> grams of sugar a day, just about the same. And now you're eating 59 grams of sugar. Oh. Dramatic streak again. <laughs> and can I say, the most important part for you all to recognize about this is not just that it's such a huge drop, but this sugar, the 59 grams, is all coming from natural sources. Yes. So both of you have zero grams of added sugar. I don't mind the sugar coming from the strawberries, it's the strawberry syrup is a problem. Right. 
So this is great news. I'm very proud of you all. I have to ask, do you still consider yourselves addicted to sugar? I, I do, um, in, in a, but not in a bad way. It's something I can control. You know, before that, I had to have sugar because I just had to have it and I didn't know a way to deny it. But now if I, if I decide to have something, it's because I made that decision. So now I'm in control. So not necessarily addicted, more of I'm in control and I can have what I want when I want it, but I know how to do it correctly now. And Shuniji, with the significant reduction of sugar, do you feel like changing your energy and your moods, which is a big problem for you earlier on? Yes, tremendously. Um, I would get so fatigued, like halfway through the day, I would have headaches. And now I haven't had any headaches. Um, I have a lot more energy. Uh, I can get through my day. My mm -hmm. staff, they are like, oh, you're in a better mood today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Katara saying the same. Yes. Yeah, so definite change. Now, Katara, you were talking about the veg vegetable options in the in the bakery. You included yes. carrot cake in that discussion. I, told you, I did. You were sort of resisting <laughs> the, you know, the cravings for carrot cake. What's that like now? Well, it's, I, don't, I can go in the bakery and I don't have those urges. You know, because Dr. Furman has introduced all of these natural sugars into our diet, we know now how to go and zap that really quick with some other options than cake right. on an everyday basis. So now we just got to get through Thanksgiving. How many of you <laughs> in the audience here see yourselves just right in Qatar and, and, and Sonaji stories? Are you see yourselves happening? Because I think this is exactly what so many in America are struggling with. When we come back, I want them to share their secrets to how they kick their sugar addiction. And the surprising thing is, doesn't mean quitting dessert. Right. How has cutting sugar from your diet helped you? It's made a huge difference in my life. I cut out excessive sugar a year ago, and not only have I lost weight, but I feel much more alert and healthy. Everyone should do it. Share your story on Facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. Next, kick your craving for sugar to the curb. But breaking your addiction doesn't mean quitting dessert. Learn the secrets to make no guilt treats. Nutritious but delicious recipes to satisfy any sweet tooth. Next. Natural remedies even doctors trust. From lowering blood pressure to conquering chronic pain, see how holistic ways can heal your body. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Here's a delicious, cho healthy chocolate cake. Taste it. Give you you know, it's incredible. Yes, and it's made with chickpea flour, right? Yeah, yeah, have some. Take one. Chickpea flour, and it's made with actually beets and carrots and zucchini and cocoa and some dates. There's no, there's only, the only sweetener is the banana. She's going like this with her pineapple. hand. Is that good or bad? Yeah. I mean, this is going to take some getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not quite as sweet, but... You gotta love honest women. That was an easy just a month ago. I was a little worried about the Joel Furman's say no to sugar desserts, but now she and her baking partner, Katara, have kicked the sugar habit and they're about to show us just how they did it. But please welcome renowned expert in nutrition and food addictions, Dr. Joel Furman, to the show. <laughs> Dr. Berman, you helped me get these bakers down from eating about 130 grams of sugar a day to 60 grams, which I got to applaud you, is amazing, <laughs> despite the, this maneuver that was going on earlier on. <laughs> so last time we were here, ladies, uh, we gave you three steps to kicking sugar. Yeah. Uh, but now we're going to turn it to the tables, because why don't you get your advice, because you guys are experts at this. And if it works for you, it'll work for everybody. So I want you to, if you can, over the course of this next segment, tell me about how you made this kicking the sugar addiction program your own. The first step that everyone recommends is, the, is that sneaking beans into dessert is a must. You guys did this. Absolutely. What'd you do? I, well, with Dr. Furman's advice, he has a great acronym, acronym. it's G-BOMBS. And in that acronym, beans are included uh, as things that we need to get in every day. So with the brownies here, um, we actually added black beans to the brownies. Um, oh. Yeah, and, and now Dr. Furman has recipes, but you know, we have to add our own little thing to it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we added extra nuts and things like that to really give it that decadent brownie taste. Now, I also heard you're sharing these at the bakery now with we, the customers. Yes. Yeah. are, yes. They What's love the reaction? It. Oh. Wow. Now, now they're gonna know, but <laughs> 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 we, we <laughs> actually put black beans, you know, in the black bean brownie and people are coming back for seconds and they don't even know that they're making themselves a lot healthier. 
right. and and still enjoying really good desserts. Mm -hmm. It's smart, isn't it? That's great. Remember the beans have that second meal effect right. that we learned about? Yes. That means that the, they prevent the slowing the glucose absorption from other foods, mm -hmm. even that are not the beans themselves. They retard, they, so you, it lowers the glycemic effect of the whole meal because you had beans in your diet regularly. Right. Next tip was to make ice cream out of frozen fruit to fight the sugar craving. I love this because you guys made it your own different way. Yes. yes. So who wants to go first? Shanice, you want to go first? Yeah, um, I actually was dying to try this because like I said, I went- So am I. <laughs> I went right in. So basically what you want to do is start with frozen bananas, but just make sure that you actually peel the bananas yeah. before Please you put them in the freezer. <laughs> I made that mistake and that was no fun. Not at all. So um, <laughs> I use frozen bananas and you can use other frozen fruits. There's like raspberries and things like that to give you different flavors. Um, I add coconut milk and and a little almond milk to mine. You don't want too much because you still want to have that ice cream consistency. Mm -hmm. And just put it in a Vitamix and blend, and it's so delicious. Now, mine normally doesn't make it that far, but <laughs> if you want to freeze it, you can add nuts to it so that it's easier to come back down to that um, consistency. It won't be so, so hard the next time when you unfreeze. You know what the most surprising thing is the consistency. Yes. It's right. it's just like, like ice cream. cream. <laughs> You can tell they work together. That's the only way we survive. Yes. I, I, I noticed you got cocoa powder over here. Is that recommended yes. by Joel? Well, I'm a chocolate girl. I love everything that's chocolate. So I actually use an unsweetened organic cocoa powder into mine. So I did the frozen bananas, added the cocoa, and mm. I really love sweet. So I added some Majul dates. Take the pits out, mm. or it's going to have some crunchy ice yes. cream. <laughs> um, put those in there, and um, a little vanilla, a little non-alcoholic vanilla. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just like eating ice cream from any regular ice cream place. As similar as you are with your addiction, your, your ability to make foods is so diverse. Mm -hmm. These are opposite ends of the spectrum, and oh, they're definitely. both fabulous. Yeah. All right, now you got this mango tip. This is the on-the-go dessert. It can work as a snack, too, but it's primarily dessert, dried mango. Yes. So one of the things that I have to do after every meal is eat something as a dessert. But this is a quick one on the go. You can put this in your purse, put it in your office desk, or wherever you are, you can grab it and go and have that quick dessert. This takes not even five minutes, but if you don't even have five minutes, this fresh mango is to die for. This dry mango is absolutely delicious. She didn't do it. I'm now sorry, you, I'm eating you it You learned now. about this uh, and modification of mangoes in yes. Italy. What yes. you learned? So um, we had a great dessert while we were in Italy, mm -hmm. which was a mango pudding. And it's basically using the dried mangoes. Now, if you want to reconstitute the mangoes, that, you, that means bring it back to life. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> so if you want to give it life, you can actually soak the mangoes in soy milk overnight so that it softens it up so it's easier to blend mm -hmm. and things like that. And a nice thing that you can also oh, look, do is, soft. Mm -hmm, is you can add, and this is um, soaked. So another thing that you can do is add some frozen mango mm -hmm. to the dried mango to make a nice sorbet. And it's delicious. You thought of everything. Yeah, it's and, delicious. And this is the cocoa version of that? This is the, the pudding. Oh, this is the actual mango pudding. Now I heard you may have some trouble with the pudding. And if I don't know if that's true or not, I just heard rumors. <laughs> and but, you know, banana pudding sometimes hard to make. So yes. I asked Joel. Yeah, I made a great banana. Well, go ahead. You, you, you oh, so you were in. You a southern girl? Oh, no, you're a southern girl. <laughs> I made you a great banana pudding. <laughs> Using the secret ingredient you learned in Italy, which was the agar agar. Yeah. Because yeah, okay. it's really easy. You just take a. Well, it tastes it. We make yes, you guys like it. Absolutely. So you take a, a tablespoon of the agar agar to a full cup of water. And it, and it makes it harden like jello, a gelatinous like, and you can add any fruit in there. And this has cannelli beans in it too. This has mm. beans and coconut and banana, and it, oh, and it, it can take the shape of the mold like jello can. You right. Know what I mean? So it shapes the, mm -hmm. and we can use it to make loaves and, you know, actually bean loaves and all kinds of desserts, fruit desserts, right? right. We learned. So right. what do you guys think? Could Joel be an honorary Southern girl he's for the a, day? He's an honorary definitely, Southern girl. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Would you serve awesome. this in your, in your bakery? Yes, you this know, is a great pudding. Would you hire Joel in your bakery? Well, we got to pass some tests. <laughs> <laughs> I would congratulate to both of you guys. You guys are the best. Thank and you. Further, thanks for all you've done as well on this. Yes. Listen, this plan is fabulous. More importantly, this change, it came from inside of you. Yes. And that's true for everyone watching as well. When they want to make this happen, I see the love inside of your eyes. You're, you now are adoring 60 grams of sugar, not twice that Give much. Give us another month. I will. I'm going to have you back plenty. Make sure you check out Dr. Furman's cookbook, Eat to Live, and visit DrEyes.com for all these sugar addiction diet recipes, especially little tips from my experts here. We'll be right back. Yay. 
We are bringing healthy back this season and want you to bring it too. Grab your prescription pad for fun and sign up for free tickets today. You can go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up. Dr. Oz reveals natural remedies even doctors trust. From lowering blood pressure to conquering chronic pain. See how holistic ways to heal your body has gone mainstream. Plus, go, go, go. Watch what happens when Dr. Oz works the night shift. What happened, ma'am? I go haywire. Answering emergency calls with EMTs. That blood sugar number is a toxically high number. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Another reason to indulge in a glass of red wine with dinner? I've already told you that a glass a day may help reduce your risk of heart disease and cancer, but today I am raising my glass and revealing the new healthy uses for one of my favorite drinks. Now, I turned to social media to hear some of your ideas, and my first new everyday use for red wine most fittingly comes from a Vine video. Take a look. Dirty food needs a bath. Dirty food needs a bath. Clean. So George is here. How'd you come up with the idea of using wine to clean your fruit? Well, Dr. Oz, I am a huge germaphobe when it comes to food shopping with my groceries. So I got, this is actually an old trick from my grandmother from oh, I cleaning. I love grandmommy trips. <laughs> <laughs> and since, instead of cleaning it with soap, wine tastes much better than soap. Much better, much, much, much better. Show me how you do it. So you just take your fruit, you put it in a bowl. We'll use you fill the whole bowl with wine? No, I'm not gonna oh. fill that, you don't wanna use, and I don't suggest soaking it in the wine. Right, no, no, that's a whole different beverage. Exactly, whole different. Yeah. So it's called sangria. Gonna, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you just whisk it around on there, oh. take it out. Pat it dry. Now you can rinse it with water, but well, wow. you know, it's a like very, magic, it's clean. Yeah, it's a clever idea. So it turns out that wine, the alcohol obviously, but also the resveratrol kills off some of the food pathogen bacteria. Right. The ones we don't want to have like salmonella and E. coli. Very, very well done. Thank I like you. That. Say hi to your grandmother. I will. Right. <laughs> the next everyday use for red wine that surprised me is that we should bathe in it. So I saw this tweet with the hashtag Pinot Your Pores. I want to find out what the meaning was. The tweet reads, it's time to do a little venal therapy. Hashtag Pinot Your Pores. Noelle, who authored that, is here. So you say this is a whole new use of wine that no one would have ever thought of. How does it yes. work? Yes, oh my gosh, it's a lot of fun. It's venal therapy, and all the celebrities are doing it. It's really super. It's very expensive. So I found a way to do it on the cheap. And it's using like the box wine, and you just pour like a glass in your bath, and you just soak in it. That's it, that's perfect. Yeah. I, I would drink the box wine usually, but <laughs> so it's just one. And how long do you soak in the bath for? Well, I do it about 30 minutes, and I do it like probably a couple of times a week. And you know what? You can have a little glass while you're sitting in the bathtub. Let's look at your pores here. <laughs> they actually look quite good. You know, it's a very ancient therapy. Yeah. It was done for centuries. See, Cleopatra used to bathe in, in wine, apparently, and milk as well. Uh, and we think it might work because the fermented grapes it may actually firm the skin a little bit and help shrink those pores. Yeah. So if one glass gets you there, then sure, save the money. Drink the rest of the box. That's right. All right. Thanks to well. And the next everyday use for red wine, of course, probably my favorite, is cooking. I saw this picture on Pinterest. There's the picture there. Oh. Aren't those short ribs good? That, these are Hannah's short ribs. They look amazing. So I invited her to come on and explain why you're using red wine versus anything else you could have put on these delectable looking ribs. Well, I love to cook. I cook for my husband every night. And usually I start out with a glass of wine. Drinking Myself, it. drinking saying, it. Yes, okay, just being clear. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I might have two glasses right. before. And it spills into the wine. No. And then I just pour the rest of the remainder of the, the wine inside the ribs, braise it. No fat, there's no butter, no oil. You know, we, I look at the calorie count here. Oh, and good. fresh herbs. Mm. So, forgive me for talking about mouthful. Oh. If you actually substitute the heavy sauces we normally use for wine, yeah. get this, you get about 950 calories from a heavy sauce, 98 calories from a cup of red wine, so you save 850 calories. And Nicely taste. done, Hannah. <laughs> there are more surprising ways to use red wine around your house. You can go to drhouse.com to learn about them. Who wants to taste Hannah's dish? I thought so. All right, we'll be right back. Let's take it over to him.
Discover your body's true age with Real Age. Take the test and get personalized tips to grow younger. Visit DrOz.com today. Dr. Oz reveals natural remedies even doctors trust. From lowering blood pressure to conquering chronic pain, see how holistic ways to heal your body has gone mainstream. Plus, go, go, go. Watch what happens when Dr. Oz works the night shift. What happened, ma'am? I go haywire. Answering emergency calls with EMTs. That blood sugar number is a toxically high number. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Today we talked about when you do and don't need to worry about the flu. But you know what? When it strikes, the most important thing you can do is to be armed to fight back. So today, so in case you missed it, it's all about the three items you need in your flu kit this season. Number one, the rum roll is a thermometer. A fever over 100 degrees is often one of the first symptoms of the flu. Monitoring your temperature is critical. You gotta take it at least once a day. Ear thermometers are easy to use and safe for the infants, children, and adults in your life as well. Number two thing in our flu kit is Vapor rub. Coffin is a big time symptom of the flu. Vapor rub contains camphor, menthol, and eucalyptus oil. The inhaled vapors work in the nose and throat to help relieve coughing. So just rub it on your throat and chest like your mom probably did up to three times a day and you'll inhale it in. And lastly, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And my friends, the single best way to protect yourself against the flu is to get a flu shot. So here on behalf of our sponsorship partner, Walmart, to give me mine is pharmacist Brittany Travasi. How are you? Okay, When's the best time to get a flu shot? Well, it is officially flu season, so if you haven't done so already, come into your local Walmart pharmacy. Um, we do accept Medicare and most commercial insurances and get your flu shot today. You don't even need a prescription at all. All right, I'm bravely ready for you. First <laughs> on our list. All right, now notice how big the muscles are, written in. <laughs> Try to avoid hitting too many muscles at once. Oh God, look at those guns. <laughs> Now, have you ever seen a ponderously large deltoid like that before? Where? 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 They're asking where. Do I get a, like a lollipop or anything after this? Are you ready for your flu shot? That's a big us? needle. All right, I'm looking away. Yeah. Do the best you can. It actually doesn't hurt, usually. No, doesn't hurt at all. All right, you can go to DrOz.com where a Walmart pharmacist has answers to your biggest flu questions like Brittany here. This season of Dr. Oz Show and Walmart are teaming up to bring healthy back, and that includes arming you with the essential flu fighters for your flu kit. So beginning tomorrow at 3 p.m., you go to DrOz.com to be one of the first to win one of 1,000 Vicks VaporUp ointment products. And audience, because we love you so much, you're all going home with Vicks VapoRub and a Braun <laughs> thermometer. Compliments of Vicks and Braun. Thanks to our sponsor partner, Walmart. I'll see you next time. Nicely done. Thank you.